How's it going guys? Today I'm going to talk about something called depreciated functionalities inside programming. And in case you don't know what depreciated means, it means that we have something that we've been using for quite a while inside programming that over time gets replaced by something newer. And this happens all the time when it comes to programming, especially at the moment with HTML and CSS. So what I want to talk about today specifically is the last two episodes in this course here. Because in the last couple of episodes, we learned how to create a front page and a couple of sub pages using HTML and CSS. But we did it using techniques that at right now, as it's 2018, is being replaced by other techniques. So we did actually, when we did the previous episodes, use something called float in order to take elements and put them next to each other inside the website. And when we did this, we did also get a couple of errors where the container that all the floated elements were inside of didn't grow in height together with the elements. And we had to use a sort of hack called hidden overflow in order to make the container register that it had floated elements inside of it. So this is something we've been doing for many years. And for the past couple of years, we've had a couple of new methods introduced to us that we could use in order to create layouts in a slightly different way, which fixes a lot of the mistakes or not mistakes, but complications that we had when it came to programming. So what I want to do with this episode is I'm going to go ahead and point out a couple of methods or functionalities that are kind of new to programming that we haven't talked about yet, but in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to create a couple of lessons on them. And then we're going to start using them from now on inside this channel here. Now, the first method I want to talk about is something called CSS grid, which is a new way we can create layouts using CSS that also makes it possible for us to change the layout where they are positioned inside the website when we scale it down to different devices such as cell phones, tablets, or other means. Now, the point that I'm trying to get across here is that we constantly get new updates to all kinds of programming languages such as HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, C Sharp, you know, all the different languages that we have out there gets updated constantly. It's not something that happens every 10 years or so. It happens all the time inside the different languages. So the way that I usually do to try and keep updated on the different changes is that I like to go to Google and let's take HTML for example, type in HTML trends 2017 or 2018, and then I would get some kind of top 10 list or something of different functionalities that are getting introduced or have already been introduced when it comes to HTML. And this is just something that's part of being a developer when it comes to website because changes are good in most cases. So we need to keep updated about this all the time. Now, one thing about updates such as CSS grid or something called Flexbox, which we can also use in order to create different layouts inside CSS, is we also need to make sure that all browsers can actually support these different functionalities that are new, since some browsers have a bit of a delay when it comes to incorporating these into the browsers. So we always need to check if different browsers does actually support newer techniques. Now let's take CSS grid for an example. I have a website in front of me here that I can go into called caniuse.com. And I went ahead and typed in CSS grid at the top here. And then I can actually see if CSS grid is supported by different browsers. So as you can see, we have different versions of Chrome. We have the older one at the top. And as we move down, we have newer versions. So right now CSS grid, which is something that's really awesome to use inside CSS, uh, is actually supported by most browsers by now. There's a couple of few for, for example, mobile phones that aren't supported. And we do also have a couple of issues when it comes to Internet Explorer, which hasn't fully incorporated yet. Now to give another example, which is something that we're actually going to talk about in the next episode, I believe, which is something called Flexbox, which is a way for us to position elements in all sorts of ways, whether it being horizontally or vertically inside the browser. And it's just much better than using float, which we used in the previous couple of episodes or the, the last couple of exercises. So we're going to talk about Flexbox in the next episode. And then we're going to start using Flexbox from now on in all projects we use in the future. Okay. And as you can see that Flexbox is actually green all over the place. There's a couple of browsers that haven't fully incorporated yet, but it's very close to being something that is just, you know, that works everywhere. So as you can see, as I'm uploading this video, we can pretty much use Flexbox for every design that we have inside uh, web development. Again, the reason we didn't use Flexbox in the last couple episodes is because Flexbox is sort of a 
new thing that require an entire lesson in order to learn it. At least that's what I think. And because I wanted to do a project before we got too complicated into CSS and HTML and that sort of thing, I wanted to do a project with you guys before we got into Flexbox. So we had the last couple of exercises and after I've uploaded the next episode, which is going to be about Flexbox, we're also gonna go ahead and do a project creating something like a gallery, perhaps, inside the website that we created in the previous episode. So we're going to create the layout for that specific page, which is going to be the gallery page, uh, using Flexbox. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to say thank you for all the support you've given me on YouTube, and give out a huge thanks to the people on Patreon who supported me on Patreon on a monthly basis. And if you're new and you don't know about Patreon, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description of this video and it'll take you to my Patreon where you can pay a small amount every month either to support me or to download the lesson material for my uh, lessons here on uh, the channel. So I hope you guys will take the time to go and check that out and I hope to see you guys next time.